After most men are killed by biological warfare, women create eco-towns where they only accept a few chosen males. The rest of the population lives in primitive camps, but Rada accidentally gets caught in one while trying to protect her students. Gera saves her, but he accidentally switches places with a keeper of the seed named Yuli in his escape. Arriving at Two Hills, he pretends to be the keeper of the seed, who helps the ladies reproduce. When he gets caught, Rada helps him escape, and they end up back in his camp where there's political unrest. The former leader Baron manages to trick his way to remain in power, but this angers his competitor, who turns out to be Yuli. When Rada rejects his advances, Yuli goes on a drunken rampage, beats Baron and claims the leadership by force. As Rada adjusts to the free world outside, she becomes tempted to experiment with intimacy, which is forbidden in Two Hills. However, before Gera gets the chance to show her how to do it, Rada's mother Yelena finds them and invites invites them back to the eco-town, promising they won't be punished. The next morning, Yelena takes Rada and Gera back to Two Hills. However, when they arrive, a guard uses a tranquilizer dart on the man. With Rada surprised, Yelena explains that surrendering Gera was the only way to save her daughter from punishment. Before this, Yelena approached their leader Vera to beg for her daughter to be accepted back into Two Hills. Vera pointed out that Yelena's mother had always rebelled against their self-sustaining society, yet she was still accepted in their town due to the woman's position in their government. However, Yelena was stripped of this position when her daughter helped an intruder escape. With this in mind, Yelena offered to capture and surrender Gera. She pointed out that the event put their leader's ability into question, and with re-elections approaching, Vera's lack of control in the town would threaten her position. Realizing this, Vera gave the woman a chance. At present, Yelena tries to convince her daughter that this is the right thing to do. They attend the trial for Gera, where he He's accused of infiltrating the town, pretending to be a keeper of the seed and contaminating their seed bank. Due to these, the judge sentences him to execution. The next day, Gera wakes up in Two Hills' luxurious prison. The doors aren't locked, and the house is only separated by a small picket fence. Rada passes by, so he runs to her, but the picket fence suddenly grows tall, blocking his path. A guard then tranquilizes him, so he gets knocked out. Meanwhile, in the outer camps, Yuli is now their feared leader and has men searching for Rada as he's offended that she rejected them. However, the men only find a letter from Gera, declaring that he and Rada were invited back to Two Hills. This angers Yuli further. Unbeknownst to them, Gera is being prepared for public execution. He begs for his life, while Rada feels guilty for letting this happen. After being injected with something, Gera is then released, much to his surprise. He thinks he's being freed, but the judge clarifies that he's still scheduled to receive the second dose in two hours, which will kill him. In the meantime, she encourages the man to enjoy his last hours. With that in mind, he requests to say goodbye to Rada. Hearing this, the woman rushes to him and kisses him in front of the community, which disgusts them. Later, Rada's friend Ia visits her at home to announce that she's on TV with Gera. She explains that Vera's humane form of execution renders the prisoners in a deep sleep while under medication that encourages their fantasies. Those fantasies are then translated on screen, revealing that Rada's kiss with Gera wasn't real. The other keepers of the seed also watch this and are disgusted by the man's desires. Litsi, one of Gera's friends there, defends the man since he taught him how to accept his desires before he escaped. Knowing that the man had befriended some of them, Rada arrives at their lobby and shares her story about Gera. She highlights how he saved her from his camp and tried to show her what freedom is like. Learning that the man didn't actually commit a crime, the keepers decide to save their friend. Meanwhile, in an abandoned mansion, Vera meets with Baron whom she has a secret relationship with. He complains about how Yuli has taken over his camp using his inhuman strength, so he questions what the eco-towns feed their men to give them such power. However, Vera isn't listening and answers a call from her assistant, who reports that Gera's televised dreams are earning them high ratings. This has caught the attention of advertisers, so Vera wonders about taking advantage of it. In Gera's dream, he's still kissing Rada when she suddenly turns away to advertise an allure device to the audience. This confuses Gera, but he's suddenly restrained for his second dose while Rada is forced to watch. In reality, Rada leads the Keepers as they tell the others how Gera shouldn't be punished. The Keepers decide to refuse to give their seed until Gera is released. Their pro 
protest is interrupted when they see Gera's dream where he's injected with a lethal dose. He's then taken to an artificial afterlife but gets reborn as a plastic bag. The plastic bag then drifts through the wind and aimlessly wanders two hills. His audience grows concerned about what this does to his real mind. So even some of the ladies demand for his freedom. Alerted by this, Vera and her officers arrive with Yelena. The latter reminds everyone that their society destroyed patriarchy since it threatened their freedom and equality. They managed to make their world flourish afterward, but she points out that their success prevented them from seeing that they've also become aggressors. With that, Yelena has a change of heart and demands for Gera's freedom as well. Vera argues that freeing Gera might lead to him bringing his entire camp to them and destroying them. Rada defends that he wouldn't do that because he's kind, but Vera points out his intimate fantasies about her, using this to stain his character. She points them to the TV, where Gera, as a plastic bag, lands directly on Rada while she's sunbathing. Ia, however, sees this as romantic since he only wants to be with her, even in a dream. In contrast, Vera thinks this is him craving for any female contact. Yelena accuses their leader of orchestrating the dream they're seeing, given that they've managed to include an advertisement there earlier. To convince them that the man is dangerous, Vera alters his dream to create a scenario with a difficult choice. With that, Gera dreams about being on a broken door floating in the icy ocean while Rada is freezing in the water. He offers to share the door to save her, but the woman points out that it's not enough to hold them both. Everyone watches as Gera climbs out of the door to let Rada in. The icy water makes him hesitate, but ultimately, he lets himself drown to save the woman he loves. Seeing this, even the judge decides to spare Gera's life. Vera warns them that the man knows about their city too much and that information could be dangerous if he shares it. Rada suggests letting Gera live with them to avoid that, and their leader laughs, pointing out that someone must take responsibility for him. Without hesitation, Rada volunteers, putting her social credit at risk if Gera breaks their laws. Inspired by her daughter's bravery, Yelena shares the burden with her and agrees to take responsibility for the man as well. Suddenly, their AI alerts them that it's time for their mandatory hugs. The ladies embrace each other to improve their moods, but Vera finds herself with no one to hug. With no choice, she turns to Yelena, and the two share a cold embrace. That evening, Yuli drinks at Baron's old desk and discovers his locked drawer. Curious, he breaks the lock and finds his hidden communication ring that Baron used to secretly contact Vera. Just then, the camp loses electricity since Baron was the one who got a deal with Two Hills to provide them with that luxury. Now that Yuli is their leader, their power is cut off. Meanwhile, Gera finally wakes up from his slumber. Rada takes him to her guest house and asserts that he must listen to their AI and follow the rules. As Gera approaches the woman, the AI reminds them to keep their distance from each other. Despite this, the man kisses Rada, but she pulls away, claiming that she was drunk during the night she entertained the thoughts of intimacy. With that, she leaves. Leaves, having freed the man who saved her life but breaking his heart in the process. To his surprise, Rada returns and kisses him, unable to control her feelings for her savior. The two end up in bed together as Rada experiences intimacy for the first time. However, she's left unsatisfied, so she goes to the bathroom with her private device. Fortunately for Gera, this is just a nightmare, and Rada truly left after he tried to kiss her last night. That morning, the AI guides Gera on the proper lifestyle within two hills and teaches teaches him how to use their technology. Meanwhile, Yelena worries about how they have specific rules that Gera might accidentally break. Rada assures her that he's not a fool, unaware that the man is currently requesting the AI to make him breakfast in the shape of a shoe. They later find him eating the shoe, which makes the two nervous. The ladies remind him that his social points will be reduced if he breaks any rule. Currently, he has 300 points, but if it hits zero, they'll all be punished. To prove that he'll take things seriously, Gera decides not to finish his breakfast to start his training. However, wasting resources costs him 30 social points, and when he curses the AI for deducting them, he loses another 10. Realizing that he must behave, Gera decides to be careful. Throughout the day, Rada shadows him as he explores their town, teaching him how something as small as using an unpleasant tone can be mistaken for aggression. The man tries to discuss how she refused his kiss last night, but Rada diverts his attention to a coffee stall instead. Gera tries to be polite by complimenting the lady at the end of the line, but this offends the woman in front of her since it implies that she's not as beautiful as the other. Because of this, Gera loses another 20 points. Rada explains that highlighting one's advantages is perceived as an insult to others. The man finds this complicated
did but promises to learn so he can be with Radha. However, she reminds him that personal contact is forbidden, so they must maintain distance from each other. Ia soon joins them and invites Gera to play volleyball. Radha refuses, but the man sees a chance to retaliate against the woman, so he calls her controlling his actions a form of aggression. Ia agrees, so Radha has no choice but to follow the two. Meanwhile, at the camp, Yuli finds two men fighting after a misunderstanding led one of them to sleep with the other's wife. The man defends that he got confused since it was dark, so Gera's grandfather reminds Yuli that they must solve their lack of electricity. He explains that Baron used to ship moonshine to two hills as payment for electricity. However, Baron was the only one who had contact within the eco town, and Yuli realizes that he does this using the communicator ring. Elsewhere, Vera demotes Yelena's job in the government to waste maintenance manager because of her assistance in the protest. Despite this, the defiant woman is confident that it won't last long since she'll be running for Vera's position in the next election. Confident, the leader reminds her that she'll need 20 supporters to become a candidate. Once Yelena leaves, Vera receives a call from Yuli, surprising her. He offers her moonshine in exchange for electricity, but she doesn't trust him. So she claims that they don't drink such vile substances before hanging up. Outside, Ia introduces Gera to the other ladies on the volleyball field. Among them is Uva, who asks if the primitive camp stone old people for being unable to hunt. Gera claims that they drown them instead, but Rada clarifies that he's joking, assuring the other women. With Rada joining the team, the rest decide that Uva should sit with Gera. The man points out that she was removed from the team because of her short stature, but Uva defends her friend since they didn't point it out. However, he did mention it directly, which is considered impolite, so she deducts 20 points from him. As the ladies play volleyball, Gera cheers when someone wins a round. Uva tells him that cheering for one team insults the others, while Rada explains that they view volleyball as a sport to improve their health, not as a competition. However, Ia considers playing for competition to make things more interesting. With that, she assigns Gera to track their scores. Meanwhile, Yelena approaches her mother Zoya for advice about the elections. She points out that most citizens would think that her campaign for equal rights would be controversial, given how they were raised to believe that men are dangerous. This makes Yelena worry about her campaign, so Zoya implies that she can get support elsewhere. With this in mind, Yelena goes to the keepers of the seed and gives them tapper hats to appease them. Lutzi, however, suspects that she's just trying to buy their vote, so he returns her gift and encourages the others to do the same, declaring that their votes aren't for sale. Later, Yelena approaches Lutzi privately to discuss her campaign for equality. This would allow physical intimacy to be allowed again, which interests the man. Challenging this, Lutzi dares her to sleep with him to prove that she believes it should be allowed. Yelena points out that she is a candidate to be their leader, so it's inappropriate to do such things to her. Compromising, Lutzi just asks her to show him her chest in exchange for getting the other keepers to support her. With no choice, Yelena complies. On the volleyball field, the competitive game makes the women turn on each other, so Rada points out that this is the effect of the patriarchy's aggression. Ia, who's on the opposing team, comments that her friend is scared about losing, so Rada is driven to take this game seriously. Her scornful mood is intensified when Ia discreetly touches Gera in front of her. This effectively distracts Rada, leading to her team losing the game. Ia decides that touching Gera is good luck, so the rest of her team also does this. This makes Rada jealous, while the man is more than happy to oblige. Outside two hills, the members discover Yuli trying to reach a beehive. They warn him that the bees will sting him, but Yuli argues that bees are a treasure since they produce honey, one of the rarest delicacies in the world. He plans to exchange honey for electricity instead, so one of the men gives him a stick to help. Yuli manages to topple the hive, but when a bee lands on him, the others run in fear of being stung. Elsewhere, the competitive volleyball game becomes violent, leading to an all-out fight. Meanwhile, Yelena approaches Vera to announce that she's gotten 20 supporters for her campaign. However, the leader is confident that she won't win since Gera will eventually lose his social points, which would cause Yelena to lose hers too. Soon, they discover the wounded women at the volleyball field, though the ladies testify that they didn't fight to avoid being punished. Vera doubts this, so she decides to interview each participating woman privately. After the leader leaves, Ia apologizes to Rada for harming her. The friends hug and forgive each other, but Rada reminds Gera that they can still lose their points because of this event. With this 
in mind, Rada decides to limit her communication with Gera since he's a bad influence on her. That evening, Baron and Krissa return to the camp, mocking how they've lost electricity since Yuli's reign. Despite this, the people put their faith in Yuli, given that Baron was a tyrannical leader to them. Unbeknownst to them, Yuli meets with Vera to offer her a jar of honey. Happy with the product, Vera promises to provide their camp with electricity, but Yuli demands to return to Two Hills instead, abandoning the camp to seek revenge. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.